Hi guys, this is module 2.1, translations. Okay, so we've talked about translations in 1.3, and they lightly mention it, but they don't quite call it by its name, a vector. Now, translations always have vectors, and a vector is a quantity that has both direction and magnitude. Certain direction for a certain amount of distance, basically. Now, we have talked about this briefly. The initial point of a vector is the starting point. So here's point E, that's our initial point. And after we go through its vector, okay, um, we will actually be hitting what we call the terminal point. And the terminal point of a vector is the ending point. So basically it's where it ends up after it moves through its certain particular uh, vector. And again, vector could be named this, okay, or this notation with the V, okay. I prefer the latter, okay, just because of college. And it also fits nice with the vector notation, which you'll see pretty soon. All right, so here's the definition of a translation, and we've seen this in 1.3. Now remember, a translation is a rigid motion, and it's basically along a certain vector now. So if you look here um, at triangle ABC, you have your initial point B, and it travels that vector to B prime. Now your vectors should all be parallel to one another. That is something to note. If you do this for all three points, by the way, you should do it for every single point of that object or image that you are trying to get a uh, translation out of. So again, same vector, that means they all go the same direction, same magnitude, they all should be parallel. They also are all the same distance, okay? So that's the part of the magnitude. All right, so parallelism because of the direction and uh, magnitude is also the same distance. So that's something to note. All right, so in example one, we have our triangle ABC and we're going through this vector. Now this vector is actually given to us on a slight Cartesian plane, so let's count the units. So from here to here, from initial to terminal point, we should be going up to one, two, and over one, two, three, four, and that's to the right. So we would actually note this algebraically like this. We go to the right four, and we went up two. So that's something that we use a lot even in uh, college, and if you go into physics, um, yes, integration, the vectors are always out in front, and that's usually giving us a sense of where the rocket or engine is focused. Okay, where are we going, basically? All right, so let's look at our triangle, our initial point for A. Again, we have to go up two, so one, two, and over four. One, two, three, four, and that's to the right. And that's where A prime will be. Now, if we do the same thing with B to B prime, up two, one, two, over four. One, two, three, four, and don't forget that's to the right. And that's where B prime will be. All right, one more time for C. Okay, so we go up to one, two, and over four. One, two, three, four. And that's C prime. Let me try to draw my image as best as I can on this writing pad. Oh, I, sh I started the wrong way. I should start up here. There we go. All right, that's better. Um, also, to remember, translations um, preserve distance, so the distance of AB is the same as the distance of A prime B prime. Same thing with AC to A prime C prime, and the same thing with BC to B prime C prime. Okay, so distance is preserved, and all their vectors should be parallel. So if I was to draw their parallelism, you should be able to see it. Okay, so here's the vector again, it goes up to over 4 up to over four, that's parallel to this guy. And same thing here, they all should be parallel. Just looks like a, like a meteor shower and they're all going the same direction, okay? 
They also have the same distance with the vectors. All right, example three. So I'm going to burn through this one a little bit faster. Um, this vector, okay, let's figure out where it's going, what direction and what magnitude. So it goes to the left, one, two, three. So the left three is negative three for my x notation. But I still go up on my y by three, four, five. So I still go up by five. So it'll be a positive five right there. All right, so let's see. For A, I'll go to the left, three, one, two, three, up five, one, two, three, four, five. If I do the same thing with B, should end up here to B prime. So there's A prime, there's B prime. Again, I'm just following. Now I'm just looking at the image, honestly. Uh, I know the image from B to C goes down three to the right one, and that'll be C prime. And same thing with D to D prime, except uh, it's out to the left by one compared to A prime. And again, that's because I know rigid motion. So if you remember rigid motion, you should know after you're done translating the image, should be identical um, to um, your original pre-image. So image to pre-image should be identical. Okay, you can also double check the vectors and, and, and just see, but it should have worked out just fine. All right, your turn number one. Draw the image of ABC, triangle ABC, after the translation along the vector. So again, what's the notation algebraically for the rule for a vector? And then uh, follow the same rule. Okay, so here are the rules for translations, and we've seen them before. If you go to the right, it'll be plus something to your x value or wherever your original value was. So for example, if uh, your original coordinate was at uh, 2 comma 4, well then you would go, um, let's see, I'm sorry, if your vector, yeah, if you were there and your vector um, happened to be, let's say, 2 comma, f oh, 2 comma 0, sorry, um, then your new coordinate would be uh, 2 plus 2, y stays the same, and now your new point would be at 4 comma 4. Okay, so here's a for example, then a prime would be this way. So notice how we had to add the constant term on our x, not our y, because we want to go to the right. So if we want to go to the left, you'll be looking at the new term, or the new rule right below it, so you'll be subtracting. If you want to go up, now you're touching your y, you actually have to add on to your y. If you want to go down, minus whatever your y is, okay? And you've seen this before with this kind of reference, okay? And this basically just gets substituted as this. Oops, not that. Definitely not that. So that can just be written as a comma b, all right? And that's, again, a vector. All right, example three. So we have a, a new object, and um, we're going to be predicting where the image goes and where it moves. Um, it does give us a vector, so I'm already thinking that this takes me to the left two and up three, okay? So let's see, to the left two, up three. So three minus two is one. Zero plus three is three. Two comma negative two, so two minus two is zero. And negative two plus three is one. And four minus two is two. And negative two plus three is one. So if I was to go ahead and plot these points, originally we're at three comma zero. Let me use a color scheme that works here. So 3 comma 0 was originally here and 2 comma negative 2 was here. This is the pre-image and 4 comma negative 2 is here. So we got this nice little triangle, isosceles triangle. There we go. And now our new 
uh, translation moved us a certain vector and we cut our new points based upon the rule. So we have 1 comma 3, 0 comma 1, and 2 comma 1. So as you can see, it's a translation, good old fashioned rigid motion. We went to the left two, let's double check. One, two, and up three. One, two, three. Yeah, that works. You can double check all your other images as well. Um, the image will be in what quadrant? This is actually quadrant one. Okay, remember quadrant two is top left, quadrant three, bottom left, and lastly, quadrant four will be bottom right. It's very important to know, especially for Algebra 2 later on. All right, your turn number two and three. Go ahead and draw the pre-image and the image, just like my last example, and then follow along this given trans or translation with this vector. Okay, so your turn number four. So write the vector of the component form. So they already gave you your uh, pre-image. They already gave you the pre-image. You just have to find, all right, so there's the pre-image and they already gave you the new image. Don't know why the touch screen is doing that now. Okay. And all you have to find is the vector. So how many spaces did it move this way and how many spaces did it move that way? So you're finding me the direction and the magnitude, AKA the vector. All right, guys, have a wonderful night and if you have any questions, let me know.